given that Amazon offers multiple types of storages like S3, EBS, and EFS, there needs to be a mechanism to feed data into these different types of storages. So that is what we are going to see today. And Amazon has a multiple ways of moving data into its cloud. So the one of the most common and easiest solution that you can do is Amazon Direct Connect. And that is a VPN connection between your on-premise and Amazon Cloud. And you can buy the VPN for about 50 Mbps to a 10 Gbps port. That is the different types of ports that you available for the VPN connection. If you need more bandwidth than these, then you can obviously lay more cables and let us say if you want 30 Gbps uh, lit or buy three ports and you will get about 30 Gbps of bandwidth capacity. So this works great for about a few gigabytes but if you are in the hundreds of gigabytes territory then I would definitely recommend you to look at the options of Amazon Snowball which is nothing but Amazon's own designated uh, external disk i would say it is a briefcase it looks like a briefcase but it's huge it is ruggedized and it is uh, fully tested for external world and it is uh, protected from uh, multiple g's of uh, what can i say is if you can drop it also your data is not lost it is military tested you can say and once you order in snowball amazon ships you uh, a snowball case and you connect the snowball case through iSCSI cables to your data center copy all your data and ship it back and you can trap where your disks are all the time and Amazon will upload it to your nearest S3 location or you can designate which S3 location you want you uh, this data to be uploaded so your data gets shipped to the corresponding S3 location and from there you can push it to your applications or any databases and remember the Amazon does not read this data or process this data so you can encrypt your data and send it to Amazon or you can uh, just upload your data and send it to Amazon either way it will work and you can see here there's a small number at the bottom of it about 50 terabytes to 80 terabyte it works great but if you are beyond that there are other options that you need to look out because you, you will at a point you will end up with multiple snowballs in multiple locations and it becomes a nightmare when logistics to coordinate all these different snowballs. Recently, I had a customer who had about 57 different locations and each of those locations had about one terabyte of data that needs to be moved to the cloud. Uh, so if I'm going to order a snowball, that means that a snowball is going to be sent to each of those locations and then somebody in the location have to copy the data and send it to back. That means we need 57 people who are capable of doing this. It was not practically possible and ultimately snowball being a great option it is, but we didn't choose that option because sending a person or hiring 57 people just doing this was not feasible practically. So sometimes real world constraints are also there and those kind of situations you have uh, third party vendors, independent software contractors who you can contract to do this job. So they come with a specialized experience to do this large scale migrations for you, especially data migrations. And there are plenty of people you can go ahead and check the Amazon partner page and you choose the vendor which you are comfortable with and negotiate your contract and go ahead and do it. So that is one way people move their data to the cloud. Another one is uh, uh, Snowball Edge. Now if you think of the Snowball, the case comes to you and it goes back to Amazon and you upload it. Um, but the Snowball Edge what happens is the data is sent to the nearest edge location. It is not sent to the region itself. It is not sent to the region where the buckets are hosted it will send be the data will be sent to the nearest edge location if you are lucky there might be a nearest edge location within 100 kilometers or 200 kilometers for example if you are in india and if you are in bangalore amazon has an edge location in chennai and amazon has an edge location in mumbai and another edge location in delhi also uh, so they can send the data to either of these edge locations instead of to the only region in mumbai and the singapore so you can get your data more faster by you sending the data to the nearest edge location. So that is one way you can move your data. Another common way for mobile applications or streaming applications is Amazon Kinesis Firehose. Especially if you have a streaming data coming in at a rapid rate, say like a Twitter feed, Facebook feed, or some search indexes that is happening or scores or comments, tagging, all those things. These are all happening at a real time and the rate of which the data comes in is really high. So in those cases, 
you can directly connect uh, Kinesis Firehose. It is not a cable, but you need to do some software configurations which will receive the incoming data at high rate of input and it can store it in your S3 bucket. And from there, you can feed it into your EMR or Hadoop cluster, or you can feed it into your DynamoDB or any other data processing mechanism that you have might have configured. Say, for example, a Splunk or a Datadog log management system. So anyway, so Amazon Kinesis is fantastic uh, source of ingestion. If you're talking about uh, data streams, it might be logs, it might be speeds, it could be anything that you can think of, which is humming at a higher rate. And then transfer acceleration. Each S3 bucket has an option called transfer acceleration. So what it typically does is it allows you to increase the bandwidth of uh, uh, inbound uh, traffic for your S3 bucket for a period of time. Uh, of course, you're going to pay a little bit of a premium cost for this extra feature. So once you enable transfer acceleration for your bucket and you start uploading data to that bucket, Amazon will route it uh, through a shortest path to that bucket and then you will get more bandwidth and lower latency. So this way your uh, transfer speed will increase significantly and the transfer acceleration speed is not consistent throughout all the regions. Say for example, you are sitting in India and you enable transfer acceleration for Virginia and try to upload uh, the amount of uh, increase in speed that you will get will be different. Whereas when you do it for Mumbai or Singapore region, uh, the speed increase that you will get will be more. Uh, so you need to make a logical choice where you are going to upload the data and then you can uh, enable transfer acceleration for that bucket. And then there is an Amazon option called as cross-region replication. So you can upload it in India and ask Amazon itself to replicate between their own network to US or Europe. So that way you can use transfer acceleration along with cross-region replication uh, to move your data all across the AWS cloud. Uh, the last one, uh, but not the last, is uh, AWS Storage Gateway. This is uh, nothing but a physical VM. Uh, physical is metaphysical. Amazon gives you a VM, which is uh, allows you to connect your on-premise resources to your cloud. Uh, so you download the VM image from Amazon, and then you go ahead and provision it in your uh, VMware or Hyper-V systems. And once this VM is provisioned, you enable Amazon account level access by providing the user ID, access key, secure key. Then you can configure your S3 buckets or EBS volumes or EFS storage and start copying your data using your familiar tools like data duplication tools or SFTP, SCP, anything that you can familiar with RoboCopy. And you can push your data through your direct connect or your VPN connection. Either way, that is possible. Again, the bandwidth is a constraint, depends upon how much your uh, network capability is. Here it says that up to 120 Mbps per second upload rate you can achieve. So if you want more, then you need to uh, scale it up so that uh, you will achieve higher bandwidth. So after all these options, um, still there were people who were having a petabyte scale of a movement of data. So that is when Amazon came up with this additional option called as uh, Amazon Snowmobile. Uh, it's list as new. It has been some time now. At least uh, it has been few months, if not years. If you have 100 petabytes of data or close to that range, then Amazon sends you a truck which comes with an iSCSI cable. You can connect it to your uh, data center and pump all your data into the truck. And Amazon will drive this uh, truck back to their own data center and upload it to the nearest uh, S3 bucket. So this way you can move petabytes of data really fast. If you compare it with any of the other means of uh, data ingestion options that you see here on your screen, um, a rough calculation will tell you that sending it through a truck will probably take one or two days. It will reach the Amazon data center or the nearest edge location and they upload it. But if you do it manually, even at the best bandwidth connection that you might have, you might not be able to achieve it in one week or two weeks time. Uh, with all the data redundancy and resiliency part coming into picture, you might spend more time after uploading, verifying whether all the data is uploaded. So the snowmobile is a fantastic option if you have huge amounts of data that needs to be moved to the cloud.